So welcome back students. We have already done the uh, nomenclature of the coordination uh, compounds. So based on that you can also write when a particular uh, formula is given and then you can write in the formula. Now let us start with the IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds. So what, what chapters do you have? You have haloalkanes, haloarenes, alcohols, phenols and ethers and aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acids and amines. So I will be doing uh, all the nomenclature of all the uh, four chapters and in these uh, four days you can complete off and it will be a thorough revision for your board exams. Right. First before going to the topic let us see what are the common or what are the general rules you need to follow for doing the IUPAC nomenclature for organic compounds. Right. The first important thing is whenever we speak about IUPAC nomenclature what is that IUPAC nomenclature let me write first this is going to denote only the molecular structure. Right. We will be speaking basically about molecular structure. Yes. So in IUPAC nomenclature what what are the components let us see. So in the mo particular molecular structure there are three things. So like, let us say okay if I speak there are two, uh, three things and those are again subdivided. What are they? Your organic compound whatever is there when you are naming it it is named as first would be the prefix right then second would be the word root I will tell you what it is. The third one would be the suffix. Prefix means before that. Word root would be the main uh, uh, parent chain. And suffix would be which we will be writing it later. Again prefix is again divided into primary prefix and secondary prefix. Okay. Then suffix is again divided into primary suffix and next would be secondary suffix okay double double f double f x okay right now uh, next important so when i have to, to speak about primary suffix and secondary suffix i'll explain of one after the other what actually is this that means generally whenever you're naming or writing and it's an iupac nomenclature for the given compound what what should be there so you're writing general structure of IUPAC name. What what are there? Let us see. So whenever you are writing general structure, the order would be yes. The first one, <coughs> yeah, we'll be doing writing primary prefix. Then comes your secondary prefix. Then your primary prefix, secondary prefix. Then comes your word root, which I've already written on the top. Then comes your primary suffix then comes your secondary suffix that's it so based on this let us write now when i have to speak about or take certain examples now remember this order let me take certain examples and show you how to write now uh, uh, first important thing for uh, you, you need to remember is let us take your uh, examples, your organic compounds, whatever you have. All the examples, let me take certain papers. Yeah. So, with this, I'll explain you the concept. So, whenever I'm taking about alcohols, okay. Now, alcohol is a chapter which you have. So, when you have alcohols, this is your organic compound. Now, what is the functional group present in alcohol? The functional group present is OH, which you have studied in your grade 10. Then, what is the suffix in this case? Suffix means which I'll be naming it at the end. At the end, suffix means later. That will be all. Yes. Suppose if I have ketone in the particular thing, right? Alcohols, aldehydes, ketones. Suppose if I have ketones in that thing, how will I? Uh, what is the group present? It is C double bond O. On either side, you have CH three. What is the suffix which I use? I use it as own. Suppose if I have aldehyde in the uh, given structure, aldehydic function, what is the function group present? It is CHO, right? So, what do you name this? What is the suffix you give it? We call it as carbaldehyde or aldehyde. Carbaldehyde or aldehyde. Suppose if you have carboxylic acid, means these are the groups which are present in the particular structure. These will be added. If you find these in the structure, you need to end with all. If you find CO, you need to end with own. If you have, if you see CHO, you need to end with aldehyde. If you have carboxylic acid, what is carboxylic acid? It is COOH. You need to end with oic acid. Oic acid. This is also great 10 syllabus. Suppose in the uh, question paper, if you have acid halides, okay, acid halides. What is acid halides? It is basically C double bond O X. 
This is COOH is carboxylic acid. You take out that OH and replace with X is COOX. What do you name this? What is the name given or what is the suffix given to this? We call this as yeah so here what did we say we, we told it as uh, carboxylic acid so now when you have COX right we call this as or name it as carbonyl halide because carbonyl group is this one halide is this this will be a suffix which you will end the carbon chain now suppose instead of acid halide suppose if you have um, this one like this X okay I'll end it here also X can be any halogen that is fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine this is your structure done now suppose if you have ester there's one more organic uh, compound that is ester esters what is the representation it is C double bond O O R how do you name this esters we call it as like uh, in the this one uh, we will write it as like suppose if you have um, C O O R we will end the word as ester right in the uh, while naming or how can I name this it is also called as O8 you will end uh, the suffix as O8 ester means O8 you need to remember this then it is easy for me to apply suppose if you have amines what are amines NH2 is amine let it be aliphatic or aromatic amine NH2 is amine how will I end the suffix fix it is I mean then suppose if I have nitriles what is nitriles the C triple bond N done what is the suffix which I uh, use I, I use it as the suffix which I use is nitrile so this is cyano that is nitrile and you will end the answer also with nitrile if you find this group you will end it with nitrile if you find NH2 you find it as amine if you find COOR you end it as O8 right suppose if you have sulfonic acid okay sulfonic acid what is sulfonic acid it is basically SO3H you can also write this as SO2 O and H so how will you name this this is sulfonic acid if you see this group you can end the suffix as sulfonic acid it is the same nothing change in this so first whenever you're learning try to practice this table learn this then only it's easy for you to name the compound without this basic data you can't write or do this now next important thing what is the order so i've taught you uh, all these things now you have you have to remember <coughs> In this particular naming of nomenclature, what are the rules for IUPAC nomenclature? The rules for IUPAC nomenclature? Yes, let us see this. So, in rules for IUPAC nomenclature, first important thing you have to remember is, yes, <coughs> that the first rule which we uh, use it is longest chain rule. So, remember the rule one. When I say rule one, you need to practice all these rules, then up, start applying in the examples. The first one is longest chain rule. Okay. Now, what is this longest chain rule? We will see. Suppose if I have an example like this. Let me take an example. Right. CH3, your CH, this is CH2, this is CH3 and you have a substituent here CH2, CH3. Now, I have a confusion. Where to take longest chain? Let me take one more example. This is also one more example. Yes. Now, CH3, this is CH2, this is also a straight chain. One more CH2, CH3. Then, I am going to add one side chain to this right now okay I have written this example now I have a confusion where what to find the longest chain because first this is the rule then we'll go to the next rule in this longest chain when I take now count suppose if I take like this the longest chain it will be 1 2 3 4 only right suppose if I take from here and see what is the possibility I have 1 2 3 4 5 earlier it was 4 now if I take like this oh, how is this this is like this okay this is like this fine now let's just count 1 2 3 4 5 so this is the longest chain now let's see this example suppose if I draw in this way how many will I get 1 2 3 4 5 only but if I draw a chain in this way along with the substituent in this way how just see I am drawing the chain because I have to get the longest chain I need to follow the longest chain rule now count how many are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 earlier it was if I close this 1 2 3 4 5 only but now if I close this this will become 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this is the longest chain rule remember you have to always find the longest chain whenever you are finding the nomenclature trying to find the nomenclature yes now let us go to the next rule of <coughs> IUPAC nomenclature 
what is this rule let me take okay this page is not clear let me take this so in the second rule which one we're going to take as lowest locant rule okay what is this lowest locant rule i'll tell you suppose if i have um, right now i have let me take one example i'll tell you if i have this example ch3 ch2 ch ch3 and ch3 now this is one example now now how will i number i said low longest uh, chain rule you need to follow okay, num i need to number the like uh, i have to see whichever is a possible uh, number to add to that and uh, that will be the parent chain suppose if i start from here let me see i start from here this is one this is two this is three this is four fourth carbon okay done now suppose if i start from here this is one i'm starting from this so this is in this direction now if i start from here one this is in this direction this is two this is three this is four right now uh, uh what what is in thing number of uh, the numbering of this parent chain right now here also four here also four not a problem anyway it is the same but numbering is done from that side where the value of the uh this substituent look at this look at rule means the value of the substituent is minimum possible number remember once again the numbering should be now why the rule is if you number from here also four if you number from here also four but what is lowest locant rule you have to remember that the substituent important the substituent which you are uh, uh, taking the substituent should have substituent should have minimum possible number okay this is the second rule which you have to remember when it is minimum possible number if i go from here the substituent what is the thing you get you get three so from if i go from here the substituent uh this one is minimum two so the substituent see that the substituent is getting minimum number so you need to name from this side so this is your rule next rule if i have to take right alphabetical order rule next rule you need to follow is alphabetical order law or order rule okay this is the thing now if you have a say, number of uh, like chloro bromo iodo like methyl like that different different substituents there then you are going to follow the alphabetical order what is the rule here more than more or if you have multiple substituents then the name of substituents to be in alphabetical order to be in alphabetical order okay alphabetical order this is the important thing you have to remember so first would be the first rule that is here which i already gave longest chain rule next would be lowest locant rule that means the substituent should get minimum number third rule would be alphabetical order if you have more than one substituent then it is the alphabetical order which you are going to follow right next one what is the next rule which i'm going to do or to teach you next one second uh, fourth one is right uh like uh, let me take an example then i'll write the name okay suppose if i have an example i'm not writing heading now i'm writing an example here now you yeah, have one example ch3 ch2 ch2 ch ch2 ch2 ch3 this is the example i still have not written the substitute now at this particular point i have one more group given in this now confusion starts ma'am so such a big compound how should i name it now what i want to do suppose basically i said we are going to uh, take the longest chain so if i take this this is the longest chain 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay right now it's a complex group done now how will i write this now should i take from here or this one then comes your rule called first point to difference rule so what is this called first point difference rule okay that is the fourth rule which you have to remember now what is the thing now suppose if, if you are uh, ruled out now you don't have any uh, lowest locant look your numbering cannot be done by lowest locant rule because substituent i have to find or there are no uh, such different different functional groups present or alphabetical order uh, like nothing like if we are there means such compounds if you have such complex compounds what you are going to do is for complex groups like this or the branched side chain the nomenclature rules what is uh, you're you going to find is the only like uh, what you are going to apply is <coughs> here this particular thing if i have to name it i'm going to write this as one i'm going to write this as two start from your substituent like this how am i going to write now 
one comma one okay right uh, no means this is not one this is one prime this is uh, two prime then i'm going to write this as one comma one dimethyl group one comma one dimethyl group it is a complex group okay maybe uh, it is not clear i'll be using certain examples in later stages then you will understand that now, now suppose if i have to take the next rule i'll explain come back and explain this point with an example next suppose if i you if you have more than one functional group okay this is very very important yes order of naming order of naming naming a compound order of naming a compound according to functional group according to functional group if you have more than one functional group how should the order be okay let me underline this rule how should the order be first important the function group will be this please remember the order COH more preferred than SO3H more preferred than RCOO taken twice more preferred than COOR ester group for then acid halides more preferred than CONH2 this is more preferred than cyano more preferred than aldehyde more preferred than C double bond O more preferred than alcohol which is more preferred than amine which is more preferred than <coughs> ketone uh, sorry ether more preferred than alkenes which is more preferred than your uh, after this one alkynes triple bond more preferred than rx which is more preferred than no2 i think all the possible values have written yes so please uh, see this very important rule <clears throat> right order please remember this order before you just